Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to install and configure Corsair's IQ software. So let's get going. Okay, so Corsair has just announced uh, their IQ software, uh, which is a, a total software for solution for all of your uh, RGB devices. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Corsair lighting software, uh, you've probably been using Corsair Link to control your uh, RGB fans and light strips and uh, RGB RAM and uh, maybe uh, one of their cooling units uh, but uh, that software will not allow you to also control the keyboard mouse and uh, mouse pad the rgb mouse pads so now they have a new software that will allow us to control everything okay so if you're uh, using the old software and you have an rgb computer setup you're probably using link software and as you can see here, it can control the RGB strips, the RGB fans, uh, the uh, cooling unit, and the RGB uh, memory or RAM. And uh, just to take a quick peek over here, uh, this is my system. So you can see that we've got the lighting strips and the uh, RGB RAM and the uh, RGB fans. These are the LL model of fans and a cooling unit but uh, I can't control my mouse pad or keyboard with this software so uh, let's take a look at the uh, Q software we just go over here to the Corsair homepage all right let's take a look here whoops Okay, so uh, there's the Corsair homepage and the uh, Corsair IQ software is featured on the homepage. Uh, it's the latest thing. It controls all their uh, devices. And they have uh, download early access now. Uh, but you can also uh, go over here to support downloads and uh, download it from here. that and you can drop it on your desktop or in your downloads folder as you can see uh, I've already got it over here so there's no need for me to download it but uh, just so if you're following along you'll just click Save and it'll download here and I like to open up uh, and show in folder and there it is I've you know you can see I got two copies of it so I have the latest copy now uh, before we install it, we will need to uninstall the Corsair Link software. Okay, so you want to do that. Go down here to the Windows menu to your Settings, Apps. And just go down here to the C's and uh, uninstall Corsair Link 4. All right. And I'm going to remove configuration files. Uh, you might, if you've got a lot of configuration files, you might want to give it a shot and leave them on there and see if they're compatible with IQ. I like to sort of get a clean start whenever I do stuff. Okay, so we've got the uh, Corsair software off, but uh, in order to, uh, you know, reduce uh, complications, I'm going to do a, a restart. Okay, so we just go over to the Windows menu and choose uh, Restart. Okay, so we've got the machine restarted, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, install the uh, Corsair IQ software. It was actually in downloads. Uh, okay, so I've got the latest IQ software here. I'll go ahead and download. Install the one I just downloaded. Let's clear up the... Okay, uh, so this is the uh, software setup. I'm in America, so I'll hit... Uh, just leave it on the default and uh, let's uh, go with it. Okay. 
next here. I'm just going to let it uh, install in its default location. And I'll just give you a quick... So here uh, you can see that everything is on, uh, but we haven't... Uh, and it basically, the computer just sort of saved the last configuration that it was using. Uh, the one we had set up in Corsair Link. And uh, we rebooted after the uninstall and reinst and uh, now we're at the, uh, we're doing a clean install of the uh, IQ. Corsair Utility Engine. Okay, so uh, let's start her up and see what happens. Okay, now it's uh, doing its little thing. Okay. Alrighty, so uh, it's a nice interface here uh, and it uh, you can see all of the devices that are connected. I should mention too that uh, this Glaive mouse, if you go here over here to lighting effects uh, and check down here, it supports the light lighting link uh, profiles, configurations, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so one caveat that I would like to point out uh, before we get too far into this is uh, I ran out and bought this uh, dark core mouse, uh, the wireless uh, RGB mouse, which is their, looks like their top of the line, most expensive mouse that they make. But, let's see here. All right, so I'm going to connect it here. And we'll turn this guy on. All right. And it's going on here a little bit. Now let's go back over here. Uh, and so we got the dark core showing up here. But the interesting thing about this dark core, if you go over here to uh, lighting effects, is that uh, the only uh, profiles that are uh, possible with this mouse are its uh, four internal. So you got the static color, and we can make it blue, uh, you know, the rainbow, which uh, scrolls through the colors. And it, the interface is pretty cool here. It shows you what's happening on the mouse. I mean, if you look in this, you can see that uh, the colors are uh, mirroring the color on the mouse is mirroring what's showing on the screen but it does not support the uh, lighting link profiles so uh, and I'll show you what I mean here if we uh, go over to the uh, glaive mouse and we pulled and we go to a lighting effect and we pull down we can see that we've got these other uh, lighting link effects which work across all the devices uh, so if you like that uh, coordinating effect then uh, you'll need to go with one of the wired mouses uh, the glaive mouse uh, is the highest end mouse that uh, supports this lighting link and I'll show you some of the fun stuff we can do with lighting link now uh, it may not be as bad as all that if you like the wireless mouse you want to just stick with that you can sort of coordinate uh, along if you've got the lighting link profiles going you can sort of coordinate by matching color and uh, sort of a, a similar profile to sort of play nice with everyone else which is what you have to do with the RGB RAM anyway because the RGB RAM doesn't support uh, the lighting link so uh, you know it's just you you're forced to have to sort of uh, work with uh, the lighting link uh, and just do this guy manually. So if it's if if you don't mind uh, just sort of having these guys 
do something similar and just play along and you don't mind setting them manually, then uh, you might want to go with uh, the wireless mouse. Okay, But in this case, I'm going to run with the glaive so you can see how everything sort of coordinates. Okay, so I think that I have done everything humanly possible to uh, arrange the cameras uh, to give you the best viewing angle. Of uh, I don't have the entire keyboard in shot, but uh, it took me quite a bit of tweaking to get this thing set up. <clears throat> okay, so uh, after our uh, installation, we got a cold installation basically. So uh, the first thing that we'll want to do is uh, set up the, you know, configure the hardware itself. Uh, we'll start with the default profile. And uh, the first thing you'll notice when you uh, click on default is that uh, the hardware that's attached uh, have profiles as well. Uh, these are hardware profiles. Um, and you can use these to actually save profiles onto the hardware itself. So the keyboard can hold three and the glaive can hold one. And then you can take them somewhere else and use them, uh, you know, the, those bring up those save profiles. But we're not really going to go into that. So, uh, like I said, the first thing that we'll want to do is uh, go over to uh, the Lighting Node Pro. Now, uh, I have two lighting nodes, and the reason I have two is uh, a Lighting Node Pro will support, there's two channels on each Lighting Node Pro, and it will support, up. each channel can support up to six fans and up to four light strips. So, uh, if you have six fans and four light strips, and then you add try to add two more, they won't light. Uh, because the uh, channel will only support up to four light strips. So you would have to disconnect the fan and connect the light strips. So long story short, I have two uh, Lighting Node Pros. All right. So uh, Lighting Node Pro 1, we'll just go over here to Lighting Setup. And uh, the lighting channel has two RGB strips. So I'm going to go to RGB Strip and you'll see that that first strip on the front lit up. All right, and I want to tell it that there's two. And you see there, uh, both of the, the two on the front have uh, lit up. So uh, they've been uh, configured hardware-wise. Let's go over to this other Lighting Node Pro, and we're at Lighting Setup again. Uh, our Lighting Channel 1 is going to be uh, RGB strips as well. You'll see that one there on the bottom just lit up. And there's a total of four connected. Now it goes to six, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know why they would put that there, because when I connected six in series, the, la the, the last two did not work. Uh, so, uh, all right. So there, uh, we've got our six lighting strips activated. And then lighting channel two is uh, an LL fans. You want to make sure you choose the right fan that you're using uh, in order to take advantage of all of the features that those fans offer. So you could uh, use SP fans and the fans would work, uh, but it wouldn't have all of the configurations available uh, or profiles. So I'm choosing LL fan here and you'll see that the one, the one in the front lit up on the bottom. That's fan number one. And we pull this down to six. And there we go. We got all four of our fans. All right. So uh, let me just start with, uh, let's start with uh, the mouse pad because it's one of the, the most easiest things. So uh, when you've got a piece of hardware highlighted and you'll go over here to lighting effects, all right. Uh, the default is the spiral rainbow, and you can see it over here in the list of lighting effects. Um, you could just delete this, and so it's completely off. But we want to add a lighting effect, and uh, it turns on spiral default, uh, spiral rainbow by default. 
and then you can go down here to this pull down to choose the different uh, profiles that are configured. All right, and we'll stick to the easy ones. We'll start with uh, Rainbow Wave. And you'll see that uh, what you see on the screen there, the IQ software is sort of mirroring what's going on on the mouse pad, which is kind of cool. And you can uh, try Color Shift. It doesn't crash on me. Okay, and that's just a random shift of a solid color, which is pretty nice too. And then we'll uh, do color wave, which is just sort of a wave motion of the color across the device. And then we'll go to color pulse. And that's just, uh, you know, a, a color pulsing on and off. So, but that's really the, the basic uh, technique for creating and changing lighting effects. You just uh, hit this little plus, add your lighting effect, and uh, use this little pull down menu to choose between the lighting effects. All right, so, uh, and then uh, there's some others over here. Uh, static color which uh, allows you to just change the color of the mouse all the way. Uh, solid, which uh, I'm not going to demonstrate. Uh, it's a little complicated. Uh, the gradient uh, is also a complicated one that has to be set up uh, on this little screen here. I'll do that in my next video after I learn a little bit how to work it. Ripple is the same. Uh, wave. Yeah. All of these custom effects have to be set up on this grid here uh, and they're a bit complicated. All right so let's go back to our spiral rainbow. Now you'll notice here that the keyboard uh, is at its default spiral rainbow and we can switch it to uh, say visor. It has more effects actually and you'll see the visor effect going back and forth on the keyboard. We can go back to the mouse pad and see that uh, it's still on Spiral Rainbow, that what we did on the keyboard did not affect the mouse pad at all. And the same with the uh, mouse. The mouse is on its default, Spiral Rainbow, or just Rainbow, I guess you want to call it. And it has uh, a couple of its own effects. But all of these uh, effects that are on this predefined column do not affect any of the other devices. So uh, why don't we get a little, have a little fun? Let's go uh, over to the Lighting Note Pro, and we'll start with the fans. And these LL fans have a lot of uh, predefined, uh, which we can play with later. But let's start with uh, Spiral Rainbow. And you'll see there that that effect uh, took effect across all the devices. If you go to the Lighting Node Pro, you'll see that the Lighting Link uh, took effect. The same with this one. If you go to the lighting, and you'll see the Lighting effect took uh, the Lighting Link profile took effect there and here as well and then here as well. Now also notice that you've got this baggage. See uh, the predefined that you set up before the visor effect is still going back and forth. It's uh, not really easy to see but let's just take it off. We don't need it on there. We want to just stick with the uh, lighting link just by itself. Let's take Spiral Rainbow off. And it does, see these two are sort of uh, getting in each other's way, so to speak. You can take this off. And then you'll see that now we just have the Spiral Rainbow. We don't have anything else going on. All right. Uh, the effects are additive. 
uh, these, these lighting effects. And I'll show you how we can play with those in a minute. So let's switch to a different one. Let's try Rainbow Wave. All right, and you'll see that everybody just jumped on the bandwagon there. So we've got the Rainbow Wave effect on the fans, the uh, lighting strips, the mouse pad, the mouse, and the keyboard, and they're all in sync. Now, uh, the LED RAM uh, is independent. I'm going to have to uh, configure that separately. It's still doing its uh, default rainbow, um, which works pretty well along with this guy. Uh, the one we're doing now, the uh, rainbow wave. That's what we're on here. I think it's rainbow wave. Yes. It has rainbow, so uh, it's probably uh, playing along rather nicely. Now, uh, let's do some variations here. Now, this uh, rainbow wave can be speeded up so that it's faster. And you'll notice that uh, when it got faster, let's take a look at this. It got faster across all the devices. You'll see, even this one too. See, so when I adjust one on a lighting link effect or profile, it will uh, adjust on all of the devices simultaneously. And here we go, uh, we can change the direction. We can go uh, rainbow wave up. Yeah, actually, I don't know that that worked as well as I would have hoped. Yeah. Ah, ah, so I don't get that choice here. No wonder. All right, so I can go right. Okay, now we're back to what we need. So it's not perfect. Uh, there are uh, little quirks in this. Uh, but it stayed right on the devices that supported right and left. Now let's try one of the more interesting effects, uh, the one that they uh, demonstrated. And uh, let's do rain. Now uh, the rain effect uh, kind of gives us sort of like a lightning flash, I guess, so that it looks kind of like it's raining. But uh, I'm not too crazy about this uh, rainbow rain. Here. And that's not what they showed on their, their website either. Uh, so I'm going to tweak it a little bit. And when I tweak it, I can show you how some of these other controls work. Let's try an alternating color. Just uh, blue and red. And that's pretty cool. And uh, you'll see that that uh, effect that lighting link effect uh, came across all the devices. All right. Now, uh, one thing that seems to be missing is uh, there's there's moments where uh, there's no lights at all, which is a little bit boring. I mean, the the flash is kind of cool. So why don't we give it uh, some texture? Why don't we give it some background? So uh, we'll go over here uh, to our, uh, we'll start with the fans. Uh, you don't have to start with the fans, but it just uh, helps me a little bit to sort of uh, get my bearings. I'm gonna add another lighting effect. And, in, and uh, you see I've added the rainbow wave. So the rainbow wave has basically taken over uh, because if you look at the fans, you're not seeing that rain effect at all. The rainbow wave has completely overpowered it. Uh, but I'm not going to use rainbow wave. I'm going to use uh, a solid static color. And I'm going to choose the blue. All right. Now I want the lighting link, that, uh, that rain effect, to kind of uh, show up. So I'm just going to drag it up to the top so that it's on top. Now you'll see that that rain effect 
is coming over. Now, there's one uh, little problem though, is that I had a, a alternating blue, here, uh, let me just, I had an alternating blue and uh, red, and uh, that blue uh, is getting lost in the uh, color. So let's change our lighting link Oh, instead of uh, red and blue, let's change it to red and white. All right, and then uh, we can also take down uh, the opacity or opacity of the blue. So then we're getting a little more of the rain flash that we're interested in on top of that blue background. So uh, we're going to have to take that across to, uh, we're going to have to add that uh, blue. Background to the, uh, and we'll need to put that behind the lighting link. And we'll take that opacity down a bit. So there we go. And uh, we'll want to do that on the uh, lighting node, the other lighting node pro. I'm going to switch that to static color and blue. And I'll take it down so it's kind of in the background and draw down that opacity. And there we go. Now uh, we would like these other guys. Uh, to do the same, so let's do that with the uh, lighting, the the mouse pad. Let's add that blue. That static blue, and pull it down. So now we've got the effect on the mouse pad too. We've got the blue background with uh, the occasional flickers of the rain, the red and. The not really doing it, is it? <laughs> uh, always works at home. All right, let's try this one. Let's add that blue static color. Blue and bring it back here. Bring the opacity down. And there, that's a much nicer effect on the keyboard because we've got, in fact, the keyboard can actually bring up that blue can come up a little more because it's uh, it's nice to have it kind of uh, bright in the background. And then let's check our mouse pad here. It's that mouse pad just doesn't seem to be behaving for us at the moment, does it? Hmm, let's bring the opacity down. And yeah, the mouse kind of just gave up on us. We're getting some movement, but uh, not as much as I would like. All right, now the mouse uh, is doing the rain thing, so let's add some blue to that guy. We'll add static color. Let's make it blue and bring it down. And there we go. And we want the the uh, ram to play along, so why don't we do? Uh, a color shift and let's do uh, the let's see we got the blue background uh, let's do the red and blue color shift we could actually do three if you want and then we could add the white yeah, and just kind of make it a cool uh, three-way now, uh, the only problem with uh, the LED RAM is that it tends to sort of bleed in between the colors. So I noticed there that there was a little bit of purplish when it got in between the red and the blue. But other than that, it pretty much is behaving. And then, uh, you know, we can also add uh, the color on this guy. It's just a static color. So uh, we could let it stay white or we could make it blue and just sort of white actually shows up a little better. 
So, uh, there we go. So we got a nice rain effect. Now I thought about playing around with this a little bit. Um, we could, uh, let's create another effect. But before I do, I'm gonna save this profile. So what I'll do is I'm gonna name it. Uh, when I highlight it, I see this little edit button. I'm just gonna call this one rain. Now uh, we're gonna st we'll add a new profile, and we can call this. Uh, actually, uh, while we're here, you'll notice that everything just kind of went off except the mouse pad, which is not behaving. So uh, basically, I am going to uh, stop the video. Okay, so. Uh, now we've got the uh, the blue rain is working. That uh, the mouse pad sort of uh, hung on me, so I did a reboot uh, to get it back. And as you can see, we've got our nice uh, blue rain effect going on on all the devices, including the mouse and the mouse pad. All right. So uh, I was at the point of uh, showing you how to create a new profile. So let's hit that and uh, we can call this one, let's call this one off. Uh, it's a nice little, because when you create a new profile, it, it turns everything off. So we can go back to Blue Rain and put everything back the way it was. And then uh, for whatever reason, maybe we don't want these lights going. Uh, we're doing something else, we're, uh, you know, talking to our boss uh, on a video conference or whatever the case may be. Uh, you don't want to disturb uh, your family. You can just turn everything off and just work with the lights off. It's a quick and easy way to turn the lights off. So uh, now we're going to work on a new profile and I'm going to call this guy Snow. And what I'm gonna do is we'll start rain. We'll start rain from the Lighting Note Pro. Okay, and you'll, you'll see that it uh, spread across all the devices. Now I'm gonna do alternating colors. But instead of red and blue, I'm going to choose this light blue and dark blue. Okay, and you'll see that went across all the devices. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the color again. I'm gonna add a static color, but this time we'll use white. All right, and of course we want the uh, lighting link effect on top of the color so that it sort of shines through. And then we can take the opacity of the fans down a little bit. So we've got this uh, white background with this uh, blue, light blue and dark blue uh, flicker. All right, so uh, let's go over to the lighting channel and add that blue over here too. Or I'm sorry, the white. We're gonna add the white, pull the opacity down a bit, and we've got that white snowy background with uh, the bluish flickers. And let's see, we're gonna wanna do the same thing over here. So we're gonna wanna add uh, another color, static white to the background, bring it to the bottom so that it's sort of uh, sitting underneath the effect and then bring the opacity down and then we're going to want to do it on the mouse too. We'll add the color, static color, make it white, take down the effect a little bit. And let's see, did we get it done on this? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. We're going to need to uh, bring the lighting effect 
onto the top of the mouse so we see that flicker. Okay, and last but not least, we're gonna do the keyboard. We're just gonna add the color there and it's gonna be a static white. And we want it down below here. And we can just kind of leave it bright. And so there you go, there's my snow effect across all the devices. Uh, and then last but not least, we'll want to do the LED RAM. And we're going to add the, uh, oh, well, the static color was there. Uh, but why don't we do a color shift uh, between, let's see, uh, why don't we, we can try the two blues, see how that looks. I think it looks pretty cool. So there we go. Uh, we've got that nice uh, Arctic snowy effect. So with the occasional flicker or flurry, if you want to call it that. And uh, so that's kind of uh, one of the fun things you can do with these lighting effects. So and then uh, I should add also that uh, let's try another profile. We can call this one, uh, say, uh, we'll give it a name. We'll call this one green. And uh, you can go up here to instant lighting and just hit green. And like everything will just automatically turn green. And that's cool. And then you can just save that profile as the solid green if you like green. And you can always uh, switch back to snow takes it a minute to sort of catch its breath. <laughs> or, or it just hung. I don't know which one. Yeah. Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. You have to actually turn that off. Yeah. That lighting effect thing needs to be off completely in order to get your other effects back. It's that instant lighting just sort of overpowers everything. So you might want to just call this instant lighting because, uh, well, you could turn it on and override your uh, profile and then turn it off and you'd go back to, you know, what you had set up, but uh, it's up to you. You could just uh, put it over here and then turn it on. And then when you're done and you go back to your other profile, you know, you'll have to disable that lighting. But that's a quick way to give you uh, a full uh, lighting effect across uh, all the devices. Okay, so uh, why don't we try uh, playing with something uh, that has some of the special effects of the LL fans. Um, we'll create a new profile. We'll call this one Arc. All right, and the first thing we'll do is go over here to the Lighting Node Pro 2, and uh, we'll turn on the Arc effect. So we're gonna add a, a lighting effect. And this is, uh, this is not uh, in the um, Lighting Link repertoire. This is, uh, particular to these uh, fans and I kind of like this effect okay so and th this is random colors right now but we can choose our colors so why don't we choose something different let's try um, let's try purple and green that's kind of a cool effect. Now uh, we can also uh, put a background color behind it if we like, which we've been doing for some of the other effects. Let's try a static uh, white. See how that works. It needs to the arc needs to be on the top, so it sort of shows through or shows over the white. We can bring the white down a bit. Nice effect. So uh, when we do that, that's that's a particular effect that uh, works with the fans only. 
It's not a lighting link effect. So we will need to go and configure our uh, lighting channels to be uh, something similar to that. So uh, we could use a I usually tend to go with the color shift when I've got some interesting effects going. Um, so I'll show you that one. And we'll alternate between, uh, what did we do, purple and green, right? And we'll just let it shift between those. We could even speed up that shift color. right? And then we would want to mirror that with the uh, other lighting node pro. And do a color shift. Alternating. And we'll choose purple. Remember what we did before? Purple and green. It did end up being blue, right? I thought we'd change that to purple. Okay, there we go. I don't know what I did there. Okay, so we got the purple shift working. Let's do the purple green shift here. Party. And then, of course, we want the keyboard to play along. Now, we could do something a little more interesting with the keyboard because it has more uh, effects. So, uh, let's see here. Let's do a color shift that we will add that as our uh, base. Uh, let's see, we got the purple and the green. All right, so we got that color shift going. But let's uh, add something else to that. Let's add on top of that, let's add a uh, visor, right? That goes back and forth. Pretty cool, that brought visor effect. Now we could even, it's random now, so we could make it uh, sort of a bright uh, red and blue. purple. So we could make uh, this red and white if we wanted to. to. Sort of give it a little bit of contrast to what's going on behind it. Or red, uh, red and blue. Red and blue was uh, pretty bold too. That worked out pretty well. And we can speed that up too. So we've got that color shift going on and then that visor effect going back and forth. It's pretty cool. And we can do the same thing with the mouse. We'll do that uh, color shift. Uh, alternating uh, purple and green. And then maybe uh, for the mouse we could just do a uh, background color uh, static color or even a pulse oh, that's custom yeah we'll do the static color on this we'll just make the static color mm, I'll just make it white and we're going to need to bring this guy up so that the effect sort of comes through there. We'll see that. Actually, that static color isn't doing much because that color shift is sort of overriding it. And that's pretty cool. And then, uh, of course, we want this guy to play along. So uh, let's add the color shift to this guy, too. 
purple. And there we go. Now this guy has a visor effect that we could add. All right, so uh, I was going to add the visor effect on top, right? So we've got the visor effect for this guy. And that's just a random effect, so uh, maybe we would... Uh, there we go. And it's a bit fast. We could slow it down if we want. But that's pretty cool. Notice the two visors between the keyboard and the mouse really aren't synced that well because they are separate uh, effects uh, with the, within each device. And then uh, we'll do something pretty with this guy. Let's just make him uh, purple. Why not? All right. And there you go. Okay, so uh, I didn't really get into uh, the performance adjustments that you could make in this piece of software uh, for the, the mouse and the keyboard, uh, the hardware effects, uh, and I didn't really get into uh, the customizing of the effects or the macros that you can do for the keyboard and the mouse. So there's a lot of uh, good stuff you can do with the IQ software. Today I just kind of focused on uh, some color schemes that are really going to make your machine stand out uh, when company comes over. So I hope you enjoyed this. So And then uh, just before we go, I'll show you that we can uh, flip back between our different effects. So we've got our, uh, remember we did our blue rain. Uh, we did our snow effect and uh, we created a profile that uh, allows us to turn everything off when we uh, maybe we just want to walk away from the machine for a while and we don't want it uh, flickering and then uh, this arc effect you know it remembers every setting that we did so it takes a little bit to uh, set up all of these effects but uh, it's quite satisfying So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. And when you subscribe, there's a little button that uh, with a bell that allows you to uh, turn on notifications whenever I post a new video. So once again, uh, thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again.